Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about how we can decrease the impact on our heels when we are walking. And this video was prompted by two questions that I got in the last day. One was simply, how do you decrease the impact on your heels when you're walking? And the other was a response to a previous video that I did trying to demonstrate the difference between a high impact walk and a low impact walk. And they could not quite tell the difference between the two in that video. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to represent the case for low versus high impact walking and demonstrate it in a much clearer way that I think you'll be able to see. Now, before we get started, I also want to let you know that I have a new online course coming out on May 1st. For those of you who are really serious about trying to correct your walking technique so you can walk more fluidly, walk with more confidence and walk with lower impact on your joints. The course goes on sale May 1st, but you can sign up for the wait list now by clicking on the link above or the one that's going to be in the description section. So now let's go into the heel impact and how we can decrease it. And it's all going to depend on the paradigm that we are using for walking. And in most cases, we're not using a conscious paradigm. It's something that we've just got in our body memory, but it is in fact a paradigm. And when we're walking with the wrong paradigm, we're going to have heavier impact and often other joint misalignments in the body. First, let me demonstrate what a normal or optimal heel impact walk looks like. I can do it slowly like that, or even slower, or I can pick up the pace, but the technique should be the same. The things you'll notice are the posture is vertical, the neck alignment is also vertical, so I'm not leaning forward, the head is not forward, and then you'll notice the pelvis is in a neutral position, so it's not tipped backward or it's not tipped forward in an anterior pelvic tilt. And then what I want you to pay close attention to now is what I refer to as the heel hover. As I do the swing through, you should notice that there's a moment at the end of the arc of the swing that it completes the upward arc and there's an actual slight pause or differentiation between that movement and then the next movement where it comes down to the ground. I'll first do it at normal speed. And then now I'm gonna add in a very slight pause right before I bring the heel down so you can tell where that end of the swing through is. The heel hover ends when the rear heel begins to lift off the ground. We'll compare that to a couple of different types of gaits that people have. First, what I call the crash and recover, or the forward lean, which looks like this. In the crash and recover, we crash onto the heel and drop to the flat of the foot all in one motion. And then we recover, bringing the body back up into normal position, and then we push and crash again. Then we recover, push and crash, recover and push and crash. So if we do that subtly, it might be hard to see the difference between the two and the difference between the impact. But when we slow it down, it becomes much more clear that this is different than this.
The second type of gait that I'll compare it to is one where there is an anterior pelvic tilt and often a hyperextension of the upper back going along with it. And that paradigm of walk uses really only one phase to each step, beginning when the heel impacts, we push through and swing the swing leg through at the same time, moving right from this position to this position. And then I'm going to push with my right hip and pull with my left hip at the same time. And that is what it looks like. Slow down. It looks like that. There's no collection as in the crash and recover. And there's also no heel hover as in the normal gait. As I said, this one occurs either when the pelvis is tilted forward or when people are simply over striding, pushing with the standing leg hip and pulling or flexing with the swing leg hip at the same time, leading to that sort of motion which increases the impact on the heel. When we observe this sort of gait from the rear view, we'll notice it is associated with a much more prominent swivel of the hips. This is much more commonly seen in females walking than in men, but I often have a lot of men reach out to me who are concerned because they are told they walk like women, and this is typically what they are doing. When we compare it to a more optimal gait that I'm describing in this video, in the more optimal gait, we do not see this prominent swivel of the pelvis. Are you ready to transform your walk? Join our exclusive Transform Your Walk Root Power and Direction course and discover the secrets to a fluid, confident gait with minimal heel impact. In this course, you'll learn to harness the three elements of your core to create a powerful and graceful walk. We'll teach you how to control your lower abdominal movements to establish your root, utilize your hip actions to generate power, and guide your direction with your upper abdominal movements. With a dedicated study and practice, you'll move more fluidly, boost your confidence, and reduce the impact on your joints. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your walk. Join the waitlist now to reserve your spot.